America's most powerful Jewish lobby holds its annual conference, but many claim that power is the reason for a biased U.S. foreign policy in the Middle East that always favors Israel. So is AIPAC damaging America's image abroad? And are cracks emerging within the group? This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Darren Jordan. Well, it's the most powerful organ of the so-called Jewish lobby inside the United States. AIPAC, that's the American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee, has a big influence on U.S. foreign policy that favors Israel. The conference is also the next step in the U.S. elections. All the presidential hopefuls are underlining their support for the Jewish state in the same forum. Winning AIPAC support is crucial in the final race for the White House. Kathy Hearn has more. Fresh from claiming his presidential Democratic nomination, an exuberant Barack Obama told the 7,000-strong audience that he was behind Israel all the way. Our alliance is based on shared interests and shared values. Those who threaten Israel threaten us. Israel has always faced these threats on the front lines. And I will bring to the White House an unshakable commitment to Israel's security. Presumptive Republican nominee, Senator John McCain, had also spoken out against Iran in an earlier speech. Foremost in all our minds is the threat posed by the regime in Tehran. The Iranian president has called for Israel to be wiped off the map and suggested that Israel's Jewish population should return to Europe. On Tuesday, Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert, who's facing a corruption scandal back home, had said it was time to dramatically increase efforts to isolate Iran. Israel will not tolerate the possibility of a nuclear Iran, and neither should any other country in the free world. He also suggested sanctions on petroleum exports to Iran. His comments echo those already made by APEC who are targeting lawmakers to introduce specific sanctions against Iran's central bank and foreign banks who deal with Iran. But not everyone agrees. So far there seems to be very much uh, uh, the policies of the past, the failed policies of the past. Now APEC wants tougher sanctions. I wouldn't say the sanctions aren't working. I would say we really don't have sanctions. If Iran doesn't stop it, then the world should take action, not just the United States, but the entire world. When speaking about the Palestinian issue, Almert said tough decisions had to be made. The time for both parties to make difficult decisions is soon approaching. I believe that the leadership of Israel and the people of Israel are ready for it. But he also reiterated that Israel would not rule out a major strike against the Gaza Strip unless the Hamas rocket attacks stopped. U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice also made it clear that Washington will keep on pressing for an Israeli-Palestinian peace deal, despite the corruption scandal surrounding Olmert. Ending this conflict will require difficult and painful sacrifices on both sides. But these are choices that Israelis can and should make confidently. Well, joining us now are our guests. They're all in Washington. Philip Weiss, author and writer for the American Conservative magazine, Eli Lake, reporter and columnist for the New York Sun newspaper, and Munthir Suleiman, a political analyst and writer. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Munthir Suleiman, let me start with you, if I may. I mean, this is by far the biggest APAC conference in history. What's made it so attractive this year? How pivotal is this year's conference? Well, it's very ironic, by the way, that uh, the White House behind me is a reminder during this APAC uh, demonstration of power and muscles and influence that in American politics, money is that the center, center player. And uh, we could see that the American politician displaying their pandering to the Jewish lobby because of the enormous source of money they could provide uh, for an election. So in a way that they buy their way to the White House. It's, a, it's a, also ironic uh, this year that uh, it coinc all coinci coinciding with the election that uh, there is an attempt to control the narrative on American foreign policy and we can see that how the lobby is trying to uh, portray how he can shape the U.S. foreign policy not only uh, toward Israel, but toward the entire world and toward the region in particular in the Arab world. Controlling the narrative is the other issue from displaying this enormous okay. 
uh, power. Uh, and at the same time, this is, this is something that they would not like to have any other alternative. It seems to me when listening to those presidential hopeful that the same script, sa the same person who wrote the script with the uh, just a minor variation. And uh, the ironic thing also that three of them, they talk and complain about the lobbyists, but at the same time they come okay. to the most powerful lobby and they pander to them. So it's a uh, very, a much hypocrisy in the American politics okay. being displayed let's, at this let's, time. Let's bring in Philip Weiss, uh, also in Washington. I mean, Philip Weiss, uh, as Munthir Suleiman was saying, there's an, there was an impressive lineup of speakers, wasn't there? I mean, John McCain, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama. But some observers accuse APAC of having too much influence in Washington. What's your take on that? Uh, well, I think APAC has too much influence in Washington. I think that uh, it was stunning to watch. Uh, just uh, truly stunning uh, that you had one speaker after another uh, uh, saying very much the same thing. No daylight between these politicians and Israel. And uh, I think that those of us in the American discourse who want to have more distance between American foreign policy and Israel, who want the United States to condemn the colonization of the West Bank, for instance, we were really disappointed by this, to see these politicians do this. Uh, so, and they're doing it, uh, you know, because, uh, you know, they need this political support and financial support, and uh, it's crucial. It's a very, it's very impressive to see just the, the unanimity of the audience of 7,000 people, just to see the strength and the, the, the really um, sophisticated techniques of uh, lobbying that are on display. Okay, let's bring in Eli Lake. I mean, uh, how do you respond to the criticism uh, that APAC has too much control over the administration in Washington? Yeah, Philip Rice and Dr. Suleiman must be mind readers. Um, I think most of what they just said was nonsense. I mean, Barack Obama raises the vast majority of his money from the internet and very small donors. The argument that APAC or the people who give money to APAC have some sort of control or are responsible for his incredibly pro-Israel speech where he said he favored an undivided Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, ultimately side by side with the Palestinian state, which is very similar to what uh, President Bush says. Um, you know, you're going to have to produce more evidence than just simply repeating the same fictions over and over again. So that's the first point I would make. The second point I would make is that there is a, the, one of the reasons for the success of APAC and the pro-Israel lobby is that it's a very popular position in the United States. Most Americans do not agree with Philip Weiss or the American conservative that the U.S. should be further away from Israel because they see the, the alternative to that. Um, pol a, pol a political discourse that really doesn't resemble or share the same values as the American one. All right, well, let's bring him back, Philip Weiss, into the discussion there. I mean, some May critics... I respond? Some, May I some, respond? Yeah, yeah, but let me ask you first, uh, Philip. I mean, some critics say yeah. the mainstream views of the American Jewish community uh, are being ignored by APAC. I mean, is open debate of Israel's policies being ignored? Uh, I think I mean, that, uh, I think absolutely right. open debate is being ignored of these policies. On the other hand, I think that Eli is right in, and, uh, in that APAC may, or I don't, uh, not that Eli said this specifically, but that I do think that APAC does largely represent the body of American Jewry. I would emphasize that it's uh, the older uh, generation of American Jewry. The, the sort of things that are invoked at APAC uh, routinely are the Holocaust uh, uh, and um, the foundation of Israel in 1948 and the 67 war, the 73 war. You never hear any references to uh, you know, the, the effect of colonization on Palestinians, at, which is some, a narrative that younger Jews are beginning to absorb, uh, notwithstanding the efforts of neoconservatives like the New York Sun, which pushed the Iraq war. And what you have to understand is that this is all taking place in the wake of this disaster of American foreign policy, the Iraq war, which the New York Sun supported. And what a, Barack Obama's, I think, her, his most moving statements today were that we really do have to change the mindset. And I think that there was uh, the fascinating thing to me about his, the response at APAC to Obama was that a lot of the people, the older people toward the front were sitting down when he was uh, criticizing the Iraq war and people were just whooping at the back, the younger people. And uh, when he said that we have to do, uh, it was very tough on Iran, the people on the front stood okay. up and cheered. I want so to, I, want I to think it's a little bit 
Yeah, I want to just put that point to Munthia Suleiman because a recent survey said that something like 60% of American Jews, mostly second generation, consider Israel as a foreign country. I mean, does APAC really represent the mainstream modern Jewish community in America? First of all, uh, APAC should act as a foreign agent and they don't. So they get the benefit of all uh, the tax breaks and all the b other benefits that associated with that. Let's treat Israel as one of the other 50 states yeah. of the United States. If those elect, those uh, leaders, that uh, uh, presumptive uh, politician that can be the president of the United States, at least they would care for the American states similarly like they care and they pander and they provide all the military and the financial assistance uh, to and the security and the diplomatic uh, backup to Israel at the expense of uh, American interest and in American lives and American uh, well, uh, well, welfare and well-being. So uh, what we are witnessing here, we are seeing even shift inside the, the Jewish community and there is a new lobby called J Street by the people who are, I call them soft Zionists, that they see this adventurous uh, coalition between the empire builder of military strength and military okay. intervention in the world and between uh, the people who represent the Israeli lobby in the United States. But at some point, I think there is awakening slowly coming into the United States and into the people. And I think Barack Obama, despite what he presented today as the narrative of the Zionist, he, he knows that he does not really, he represents shift in the American psychology toward a uh, right. person who can uh, understand the world and who could be sensitive to the world and at least sensitive to the need of the Palestinian who are suffering daily okay. but okay. we don't Let see me... in any of the speeches any kind of addressing to their grievances or to their suffering. Okay, let me, let me put the issue of the Middle East peace process to Eli Lake. I mean, how do you see US relations with Israel driven very much by the Jewish lobby as affecting US policy in the Middle East? I mean, surely it affects things like the stagnated Middle East peace process. Uh, Darren, don't take this the wrong way, but if you're going to ask me questions where you add things in like driven very much by the Jewish lobby, then I'm going to say that I don't think you know what you're talking about. The uh, U.S. foreign policy is determined by many different factors, like the president, the, uh, the, the, the foreign service, the CIA, and while the uh, APAC is certainly very influential in Congress, we never have a discussion of Saudis or the um, families that own most of the world's oil that have a tremendous influence on the diplomatic corps, for that matter, retired CIA. Uh, do we have, do we have in the United States discussion similar to the discussion? Hold on, wait a second, wait a second. Discussion listen, I, listen, I, listen, I, just, okay, heard, so I just, just heard wait a second uh, because we're going to go to a break. Gentlemen, we're going to, we're going to go yeah, to yeah, a break. Okay, I'd be happy to go to a break. <laughs> we're going to go to a break in a second. When we come back, APAC officials have even been accused of spying. So are the cracks starting to appear in the friendship with the U.S.? Stay with us.